will find that the Orion Nebula, the brightest nebula in the night sky, forming new stars. That is the constellation that we are photographing right now. And just to show you guys what we're looking at here, here's my phone from Nina that my telescope is seeing right now. In today's video, I'm gonna be photographing the brightest nebula in the night sky for us to observe and photograph, the Orion Nebula or Messier 42. I'm gonna be using my backyard telescope setup that I have brought to college, to my lake house, to a bunch of different places to do astrophotography. And one of those places is somewhere that I am on Thanksgiving break for now, which is my house. And ever since my injury, I haven't done any astrophotography here for five months. So tonight is truly a special moment for me as I photograph more space from my backyard finally without any limitations. I'm very excited to get started here. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tanner from Asher Tan, and this channel is dedicated to photographing space and showing you how to do it from a beginner standpoint to also some advanced tips and tricks. I seriously cannot believe that I'm here at my own house photographing something and filming it because it has seriously been so long and it has been a long time coming to finally be photographing something that I truly love to photograph. It's new moon, so we have a lot of leeway for what we want to photograph here. So without further ado guys, let's get rolling into this video. I guess it's finally time to do a backyard reveal for people who are new. Um, I really have a really good spot for taking pictures and voila, here it is, like I never left. And let's go walk over to the telescope here. Here is my telescope setup tonight that I'll be using to photograph the Orion Nebula. So at the top you can see I have my kind of wide field refractor here. I'll go in more in depth later. And then here's my camera that I use and my guide camera. And of course my Skywatcher Star Venture GTI, the tracking mount that essentially tracks all the stars in the night sky. I have Polaris that will be around here later on and it tracks an emotion like this throughout the sky. So constellation of Orion is gonna start rising around here for when I'm gonna take a picture of that because the Orion Nebula is in there. And essentially my telescope here is going to track the Orion Nebula as it goes all around the sky like that. It's gonna be a really cool scene, so stay tuned for that. But man, clear skies, not a cloud in the sky. Oh my God, the sun, oh hello. And the mini PC that runs the entire rig. So we will get more in depth with all these things. And right now I'm sitting where I used to sit for a lot of filming vlogging type of videos on this channel. And it really feels crazy that five months ago I had no idea that it would be my last video from the house for a long time. Yeah. If you want to truly know what happened, I have a video regarding my first video at Butler University where I kind of went in depth as to what happened to me. But essentially, you can see I do have a massive scar on my arm. My arm got broken, it was a whole fiasco. So luckily we're back and we're healthy and we are physically and mentally at an all time high. So I'm super glad to say that we're finally able to just enjoy life and take pictures like we used to here. So, and it doesn't typically get very clear here in the winter time, but it's really counterintuitive because I'm wearing a t-shirt right now. It is, I don't even know what day it was. When was my birthday? It is November 23rd and I am still wearing a t-shirt. So yes, the, the winter season of astrophotography is definitely here, but it surely does not feel like it. But next week we're gonna start getting down the 30s. Anyway, basically when us astrophotographers are trying to take pictures of the glorious sky here, we kind of have a lot of issues. The winter depressive state is what I like to call it. Essentially, we have a hard time photographing pictures of space because the weather always clouds us out. And if you have a camera that is able to photograph through clouds and even during the daytime, hit me up. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't think any of those exist. So I checked my break schedule, which lasts 10 days, and I have three clear nights here from the backyard, most of them which are under new moon conditions, but I'm pretty sure the crescent moon just started. It's really, really thin, but no problems whatsoever. Whatsoever. And my good old unobstructed view of the sky with no trees will truly help me be able to photograph the Orion Nebula the entire night, start to finish, and hopefully if my mount performs well 
and I take really good exposures, not any clouds or anything that likes to ruin our night, then I should be able to grab a solid 12 hours of exposure time here. Then I should be able to maybe, if I feel that the unfiltered data looks good, maybe start to isolate some of the details in the Orion Nebula. And for us to do that for one-shot color astrophotographers like myself, which means that we use a camera that is just like the one that I'm recording on, the one that you probably are watching this video on if you have a phone, it is a color camera, which means we collect all wavelengths of light, all the colors, all the everything. And the way that I might approach the Orion Nebula, which we'll see, it's going to be a game time decision if we have a random clear night, is I'm going to do something called an RGB HA image. RGB means I'm going to collect all the colors that I can collect using no filters whatsoever. In space, there's a lot of details that we can isolate. For example, if you had a hydrogen alpha filter and stretched that across the sky, you would see so much hydrogen alpha, but unfortunately we can't do that. So that's why we need to make small two inch filters that are able to observe the hydrogen alpha emissions that create new stars and such. Now the Orion Nebula has a really strong HA and O3 presence. Oh my god, still with this. I think I already stepped in one. Let's check the shoes. Oh no, that's really not good. Great. Another one there. I come home from college and there are still landmines that my dog just does not want to be generous enough to clean up for me. If you have moderately dark skies, like for example here, I believe it's around Boral 7, and there's no moon, you should have a not too bad time getting all the outer dust of the Orion Nebula. This is a really great target also for wide field astrophotographers because you're able to collect all the outside dust. It's part of the larger Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, which features Barnard's Loop, the Boogeyman Nebula, M78, the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. There are so many things in the Orion constellation that you can photograph. It's actually insane, which is what carries us here in the northern hemisphere because Orion just has so much things. And it's definitely one of those constellations that I want to go out to a dark sky site and view, but unfortunately we don't have those here and I'm always in school during the winter season. So hopefully one time when I'm older, that will be a dream come true for me. And I'll go more in depth in the Orion Nebula once the sun sets, but let's take a look at the gear that I have. And so right up here is my Aperture EDR60. I got this off of High Point Scientific, the best telescope retailer in the world, in my opinion. And if you want to check out anything that High Point Scientific has, I have links posted below. Those are my affiliate links. So it'd be great if you guys just check those out. And this telescope is going to give me pristine views of the Orion Nebula since it is a $550 telescope, so I sure hope so. But they are designed specifically for getting really good pictures of astrophotography because there's a lot of things that you need to be able to take good pictures of nebulae in space if you take this hobby seriously. And luckily enough, they gave me a guide scope up here to help with my tracking. And I have a guide scope here, which is the Player One Mars C. And Player One's kind of an underground camera brand, but I love them so much, so much that I also have them as my main imaging camera. This is the Artemis C Pro and this camera is designed for taking pictures of space so not really for daytime use and the cool thing about these cameras is that they have a fan built in to cool the camera down to take really noise free images and if you guys are curious what kind of sensor this is this is an imx 294 sensor so compare it to the zwo asi 294 mc pro along with that i have my best friend in the whole entire world this is the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. And this is one of the cheapest star tracker mounts you can get on the market. And as you can see, I set it up all for my college bag there. Essentially what I'm saying is that this is one of the best portable astrophotography setups. I took it all out of this bag. I'm able to carry it on my back. If you've watched my Butler videos, I do it and it works really well. And this mount I'm pretty sure is around in the $700 range, which is perfect because it holds 11 pounds of weight and it's easily able to be put away in a bag and it performs amazingly. You see it plugs in via USB all the way into my mini PC and you need a DC 12 volt outlet to power this thing. So if you want to learn anything else about the gear that I have, shoot me a message in the comments or like I said, check out my Amazon or High Point Scientific links. So thank you guys so much and let's talk more about the Orion Nebula and let's get into the nighttime because I'm going to make the sun set right now. Check the view from outside. Boom, constellation of Orion. And right in there 
you will find that the Orion Nebula, the brightest nebula in the night sky, forming new stars, that is the constellation that we are photographing right now. And just to show you guys what we're looking at here, here's my phone through Nina that my telescope is seeing right now. So as you can see, the Orion Nebula looks absolutely stunning. All right guys, we are kind of crouched on the ground right now because my telescope right here is currently imaging the Orion Nebula Messier 42 and it is pointing right up there and it is a beautiful night here. I'm able to see the Orion Nebula with my own eyes and a lot of you guys are actually able to see that with your own eyes as well. Even if you live in a city, you're able to see the Orion Nebula. It is that bright in the night sky. So if you're watching this video on a clear night, I guarantee you, you will see the Orion Nebula maybe just ever so slightly and maybe take your phone out and grab a picture of this stellar nursery because it really is insane. So the Orion Nebula is roughly around 1,340 44 light years away from Earth. And right now, from my backyard, I'm viewing something that I am seeing currently 1,344 years ago which is absolutely crazy how space-time works, but it really is cool. My whole imaging train here, as I was talking about earlier, is pointing directly at the Orion Nebula, photographing new stars being born, and it's just something that I learned about in class too, in my astronomy class that I'm in. Now, before I end things and show you guys the final reveal of the Orion Nebula that I photographed here with my wide field telescope, which is really important for highlighting all the magnificent details that the Orion Nebula has to offer, I want you guys to see why I'm photographing this target in the first place. First of all, the Orion Nebula is a great target for beginners and I stem this back to the reason why I'm doing this right now and that's because the Orion Nebula was the first deep sky target that I ever photographed here in the backyard. Yes, when I got my telescope, my first DSLR camera, it was the first object that I went towards and there is a huge amount of logic behind that. Like I said, it is one of the brightest nebulae in the night sky and it is easily accessible for beginners. You can photograph it even with a lens that I'm filming this camera on right now. It might not look as magnified as if you're using a telescope like the one behind me, but you will still see the magnificent details of the Orion Nebula. You can even get some wide field astrophotography shots with a camera lens with a star tracker to highlight the entire constellation as a whole. So essentially the Orion Nebula is just awesome. In every single way, shape, or form, it is a great target. Experienced astrophotographers even come back to it after spending probably countless hours on it already doing it many years prior. And I always find myself doing the Orion Nebula every single year, even though I always like to try out new targets in space that I have never photographed but the Orion Nebula is just awesome. You can't go wrong with it. I hope you guys enjoyed the work that I put into on the Orion Nebula, a project that I have been long awaiting for, being back here five months later in the backyard, having an absolutely blessed night of clearness and astrophotography. It's been great. I'll see you guys in the next astrophotography adventure in clear skies. Before we end the video, we have to find this owl. It is really cool, very rare that you see these.